glad to be worshiping with you this morning, whether you're joining us online or in person, especially for this special service where we are joined by our bishop and his wife, Caroline, and we will have confirmations, receptions, and reaffirmations. So what a joyful morning. Our service, as always in Lent, begins with a silent procession. Please stand. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. At this point, I want to invite forward our children for the children's moment. Come on up. Parents are welcome to come too if they would like to. Come on up. Good to see you. Come on up, girls. Okay. What a great group of people. I see lots of green for St. Patrick's Day. Yes, sweetie. I have something to share with you all. You have something to share? Okay. That is beautiful. Did you draw that? Yes. And can you tell me what it says at the bottom there? Jesus. It says Jesus. It's a drawing of Jesus on the cross and in the manger. That's beautiful. Thank you. Good morning, girls. 
Okay, well that is a beautiful picture. And that makes me think about what we're doing today. We have a special service today. Does anyone know why it's a special service today? Yes. Because he's here. Because he's here because of the bishop? Yeah, yeah. Well, when the bishop comes, sometimes we have things called confirmations, which is a really big word. Confirmation. Can you say it? Confirmation. confirmation. Does anyone know what to confirm something means? That's a, that's a hard one. No, you don't know? That's a hard one. Well, let's say if we made plans to have a party and I called your mom and said, I just want to confirm, hey, sweetie, welcome. I just want to confirm the plans. What do you think that means, said confirm? I just want to make sure that's still the plan, that's still what's happening, right? Make the plans. Yeah, make the plans, make sure it's happening, to, to go over what we already said and say it again for sure, okay? Well, when we're baptized, when you guys were baptized when you were little, your parents made promises that they were going to raise you up to know Jesus, and they made promises about that. And when people want to make those promises for themselves when they're older, they confirm them. They say them again in front of everybody. They publicly say, just like your picture, I believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross and he rose again because he loves me. You were baptized once? Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. You were baptized here? We can figure out Cooper's baptism later if you want, okay? But if anyone hasn't been baptized, they're always welcome to be baptized. Um, but the idea of confirmation is people are saying again in front of everyone for themselves instead of their parents this time, I make these promises for me. I believe in Jesus. I want to know him and follow him. And then some people did that in a different church, and so now they're coming here and they're saying, I want to be part of this church, and we receive them. And some people did that a long time ago, and they want to do it again because it's been a long time. And we reaffirm, we say it again. Okay, so after you guys go off to your children's church, when you come back in, you're going to sit over here, and you're going to see a lot of people come up, and the bishop's going to lay a hand on their head, and they're going to be confirmed, reaffirmed, or received. Kind of like baptized, but they're saying it for themselves instead of their parents saying it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's say a quick word of prayer, y'all, okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you so much for today and this special chance for people to say in front of everybody that they believe in you, that they trust you, and that they want to follow you. And I just pray a special blessing for these people, O oh Lord. And for all of us who are here and who get to see this, I ask that you would help us to come closer to you through this, that you'd help us to know you better, that you would give us the joy and the courage and the desire to say the same thing in public. We believe in Jesus. We love him. We know that he died for us and he rose again, and we want to follow him. Amen. All right, y'all have fun at Children's Church. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord, 
for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13. can be found on page 4 of your bulletin. Let's read this uh, by whole verse. Responsibly by whole verse, sorry. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. May you hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the sequence hymn.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to be at St. Philip's Church this morning. Good for us to be gathered for the worship of Almighty God. Good for us to be in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead. And good for us to have this opportunity to connect on the occasion of the bishop's annual visitation. I am grateful to you all for your hospitality this morning, extended not only to me, but to my wife, Caroline, who is here with me today. Uh, grateful for that hospitality, uh, but grateful as well for your leadership as a congregation here in this part of our diocese where there are so many opportunities uh, for the church to do its mission and ministry. Uh, this Nashville neighborhood has got so many opportunities to, to greet those who are coming uh, to Middle Tennessee, uh, to Nashville, and so many opportunities to, to call those folks into the fellowship of the church. So thank you all for your leadership and making good use of the opportunities that you all have to do your mission and ministry here. So grateful for your leadership as a congregation. I'm grateful in particular uh, for Mother Caroline and, there she is, Mother Caroline and her leadership here at St. Philip's, uh, but also more widely in the Diocese of Tennessee. Thank you all for bringing her here. What a gift leadership is. It truly is. Leadership in, in times of challenge and adversity, as well as uh, times of great blessing and joy. It's been quite a year at St. Philip's. So thank you for that gift of leadership, Caroline. And also grateful for the leadership of your vestry, uh, for its uh, leadership, again, in these, in these times of opportunity uh, for this congregation, and also for its good stewardship of the resources that have been given you all here at St. Philip's Church for the mission and ministry of the church. Grateful to them for their good stewardship. And thank you also to everybody who is in, engaged in the ministry of this congregation. 
I know, you all probably know it even better, that uh, in a congregation like St. Philip's, uh, gifts of leadership are really required all the time. Folks who are out on the stage and then folks who are behind the scenes. It really does take so many people working together to resource the ministries of a congregation like St. Philip's. So thank you all for your ministry. Uh, grateful as well to the many volunteers and uh, professional staff here at St. Philip's Church. But in particular, I'm grateful to you all who are here, whether you're in the building or joining us online, I'm grateful to you for your leadership. Now, you may not think about yourselves as leaders, uh, but you all are leaders today. You may think about yourself just as, you know, Episcopalians tend to do this. You know, I'm just, I'm just here to pray, just here to pray. Well, you are all leaders because you all are the ones who have turned out and shown up here today and are making it possible for us to be the church here at this time and in this place. You all are doing that. I'm not doing that. You all are doing that collectively by gathering. You are doing that. And that is the fundamental act of Christian leadership. It's simple, isn't it? Just showing up. But it's fundamental. Just here to pray? Good heavens. Check that out. How profound it is to gather for prayer. How profound it is. And I am grateful to you all for exercising that gift of leadership here today. What a tremendous gift that is. It is truly good for us to be together here at St. Philip's Church this morning. From our Gospel reading this morning, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Old-time Episcopalians and maybe some others might remember Passion Tide. Passion Tide. Passion Tide was the last two weeks of Lent that had their own distinctive liturgical marks. Crosses were veiled in Passion Tide, for instance, and that's a practice that in many places has been extended to the whole of Lent. You'll see our our cross veiled right there. So Passion Tide had its own particular observances back in the day, but most importantly, the pace of things changed in these two weeks, right before Easter, as the theme of Christ's suffering or his passion grew in prominence as Good Friday drew near. In Passion Tide, back in the day, Jesus' death began in earnest to cast its long shadow over the Lenten season. The pace changed, and it still does in our lectionary. Our reading today from the Gospel of John brings us within the shadow of the crucifixion by showing us Jesus greatly troubled, praying to God about what lies ahead. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. The hour, of course, is the hour of crucifixion. It's John's version of Jesus' prayer in the other Gospels in the Garden of Gethsemane. You all know this. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus' prayer in the Garden at Gethsemane. This is John's version of that. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. It's the same idea. Jesus, greatly agitated, 
but nevertheless open to what God wills. Jesus, deeply troubled, but still leaning into the future that God has prepared for him. What we're given in our reading is Jesus Christ, fully God, but also fully human. And that's a benchmark notion of Christian orthodoxy, insisting on the two. Sometimes uh, Christians spiritualize Jesus so much that he scarcely seems human, so ethereal and high-minded that it's hard to imagine him breaking into a sweat, much less agonizing about anything. I think of this as beachcomber Jesus. You know, he's just so cool. He has the right word to say. He's laid back. Can't imagine him in agony. Jesus' words, now my soul is troubled. These words don't allow us to do that to turn him into Superman or even a beachcomber. Here we have Jesus under stress, feeling the pressure. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? That adds another dimension. The specter of Jesus heading out the door and running for cover. We don't like to think about the Lord entertaining that kind of thought. But nevertheless, here it is. Christian faith presents us, as we say in the Creed, with Jesus who suffers, dies, and is buried. Jesus who suffers, dies, and is buried. We worship the Word made flesh, who, because he is fully human, can feel what we feel experience what we experience. As it says in our, readings, in our reading from Hebrews this morning, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Sometimes we think that if we emphasize Jesus' humanity too much, we will undercut his divinity. But nothing could be farther from the truth. As it says earlier in Hebrews, in the fourth chapter, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. We worship a Savior who is human, just not merely human. John's Gospel gives us a passionate Jesus, back to Passion Tide, a passionate Jesus, not just a Savior who can feel what we feel and suffer what we suffer, but one who is fully human and who passionately pursues God's call to him. When Jesus prays, Father, glorify your name, he's leaning wholeheartedly into the future God has prepared for him. Father, glorify your name. That's the prayer. Jesus is obedient to the Father's word. In John's Gospel, it's clear that Jesus is passionate about the glory of God and the salvation of the world. John's Gospel also gives us God's answering voice here in our reading today. John's Gospel gives us the vocalized response to Jesus' prayer. The voice says, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The hour is drawing near when God's glory will be revealed on the cross. Amazing. God's judgment on the world, 
and his victory over sin and death. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. It says in this 12th chapter of John, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. When Jesus is lifted up from the earth, as he says, he draws all things to himself. So what are you passionate about? Back to Passion Tide again. <clears throat> maybe, maybe this season, you are feeling the pressure that Jesus was feeling as his hour drew near. Our circumstances are also different. It's hard to know whether folks are feeling that pressure. Maybe this season you are thinking about running for cover. You're looking around frantically for the exit out of whatever dead end you think lies ahead. Happens all the time. We all know this territory. If so, if you're feeling that kind of stress, you have a savior who can sympathize and help. Or maybe, and these are not mutually exclusive, a lot of stuff can be going on with us all at the same time, or maybe you are, healing, you are hearing the call of God to, lead, to lean passionately into the future that God has prepared for you. If so, you are also following the path that Jesus has already trod. Our confirmands today are thinking about these things, I hope, God's call, and all of us together here in this church have the chance today in our liturgy to reaffirm our faith in the Word made flesh. In other words, we have the opportunity, along with our confirmands, to answer the call that's addressed to us. In the terms of our gospel today, this is the hour for God to be glorified in us. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, let us ascribe as is most justly due all might, power, majesty, and dominion this day and forever. The candidates will now be presented. I present these persons for confirmation, these persons to be received into this communion, and these persons who desire to reaffirm their baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Please stand.
Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God, the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the hope of glory, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Defend, O Lord, your servant Tucker with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Matthew, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you.
Diane, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Robin, we recognize you as a member of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Jim, we recognize you as a member of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Defend, O Lord, your servant Lisa with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Defend, O Lord, your servant Janice with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Stuart, we recognize you as a member of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Paula, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Zoe with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Please stand. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Oh, it's peace. Great to see you. Peace of the Lord. Thank you. Oh, they didn't disturb. They were very quiet. God's peace. Good to serve with you today. God's peace. Good to see you both today. Thanks.
Well, y'all know I hate to cut short past in the piece, but we do have some more announcements to tackle before the rest of the service. So once you've had a chance, please feel free to take your seat. First of all, I just want to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the service, which is, once again, welcome especially to our bishop and to his wife, Caroline. Great people are named Caroline, just so y'all know. Uh, <laughs> And uh, also welcome to all of our first time guests today. St. Philip's loves to meet people. We love having folks here and we'd love to get a chance to get to know you. But we'd also love a chance to pray for you. We pray for all of our first time guests for a year after they visit, whether or not they ever come back in a middle of the week prayer group. So if you'd like to be a part of that list, we do need to know your name. And the way to let us know is to fill out one of the welcome cards in the pew back in front of you. You can drop it in an offering plate, you can give it to an usher, you can give it to me. But if you fill that out, we will be praying for you. If you're joining us online and you'd like to be a part of that list, just send me an email at mother.caroline at stphillipsnashville.org and we'll be praying for you too. Now, obviously this is such a fun and exciting day to be celebrating our confirmands, those received and reaffirmed, and of course the visit of Bishop John and his wife. So we will have a celebratory coffee hour after the service, just down the hall in the gym there, Langford Hall. Uh, there will be cake, there will be of course donuts, this is St. Phillips, and coffee and all the good things. So come join us there for that right after the service. A few quick reminders, because we're getting real close to Easter, y'all. If you haven't yet uh, filled out one of those envelopes and turned it in, if you want to donate towards Easter flowers, please do that. There are more envelopes at the entrance, either entrance. Um, please do that as soon as possible. Fill that out. You can turn it into the office. Again, you can drop it in an offering plate. Any of that works. And then Holy Week is just around the corner. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And I want to do, take, a, take a moment to especially encourage you all, if you have not come to the Holy Week during the week services before, really, really, you, can, you should if you can. It is, Easter is always wonderful and it is always incredible and it's always a holy, holy day. But when you walk through the whole of Holy Week, walking with Jesus, as it were, through his passion, I can't even begin to describe to you. It is, it is such a powerful and incredible uh, experience with the Lord. So I do want to remind you, please, please, those services are coming up. If you can make it, come to those. We have a Maundy Thursday service. We have Good Friday services. And then we have the Easter vigil on Saturday and, of course, Easter Sunday morning. The calendar is on our social media, and it should be in the back of the bulletin, I believe, as well. Almost done, I promise. I want to invite up Emily for one more thing about, um, about Holy Week. Good morning. Good morning. So to help your little ones walk through Holy Week, I assembled something I'm calling Resurrection Eggs. It's um, a carton full of plastic Easter eggs, but instead of candy, each egg has something to do with Jesus's um, final week here and his passion, death, and resurrection. So um, I encourage you to pick it up. To me, I don't think there's a benefit in grabbing one for each child you have. Just one per family would be good. However, if there's somebody else in your life who um, would find this an edifying activity, please don't hesitate to grab it, one for them as well. It would be an honor to share with them. Um, the cartons themselves are in Mashad downstairs and then leaving Langford by the exterior doors today, the gym. You can grab the cartons there as well. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. 
One more thing before our service keeps going, and that is just some communion instructions for those who may be with us for the first time. Oh, I'm sorry, not, I'm kidding. Come on up, <laughs> other Emily, for another announcement. Uh, this is just about the Easter egg hunt we'll be having on Easter Sunday, probably about 11 o'clock after I get everything hidden. And, and I just want to say thank you so much for everybody who has picked up the empty Easter eggs and has taken them home to fill. I really appreciate it. I think the box is actually empty downstairs. And of course, I was in a hurry this morning to make sure we were here extra early and forgot the rest of the empty eggs at my house. So I will make sure to have those here by next Sunday for the last few um, bags to be filled. So if you have any at home, any of the eggs that you've taken from me and are filling them, if we can just have them back by Easter Sunday, that's fine. They don't have to be here any extra time early. But I just want to say thank you to everybody who has picked some up. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Emily. It was very hard to convince Verity that those eggs were not for her to open right away. So if you have them, bring them in. I had to hide ours. Um, so communion instructions, and this is the last thing, I promise. Uh, communion instructions, we're gonna, you're gonna be released by row by the ushers to come forward and kneel on either side. If for any reason you can't kneel, it's fine to stand. The bishop or I will come around with the bread and all you have to do is hold out your hands to receive a wafer and then someone will come by with wine. You can either drink from the chalice, you can dip your wafer, or you can let um, one of our chalice ministers dip the wafer for you. Now, if you do that, and it's some people's tradition to do that, and that's fine, if they dip it for you, you just gotta give them a place to put it, okay? Otherwise, it's like trying to feed coins into a vending machine. It doesn't go well for anybody. So, those are the communion instructions. Communion is open to all baptized Christians. This is the Lord's table, not the Episcopal Church's table, not my table. Um, so all baptized Christians are welcome to receive. If for any reason you do not want to receive, we invite you to come on up anyways and just cross your arms over your chest and we'll give you a blessing instead. Once you've received or been blessed, just go back down the side aisles to your pews. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Nice job. Yeah, there's a lot of tradition. Mm -hmm.